So we're going to be talking about zero negative myasthenia gravis. And as you know, myasthenia gravis is a clinical diagnosis. It's characterized by variable and fatigable, variable and fatigable, which means it changes throughout the day and it can be made worse with effort. And typically for ocular myasthenia, that's ptosis and ophthalmoplegia. And it can mimic any pattern of ophthalmoplegia as long as it's pupil spared, pupil can't be involved, and painless, and it really can't have any other paresthesia or perception loss, optic neuropathy, and proptosis is not allowed either unless you have concomitant myasthenia. So it's a clinical diagnosis defined by variable fatigable ptosis and ophthalmoplegia for the ocular myasthenia gravis. And you're going to ask about the generalized symptoms, weakness um, in the extremities and in the bulbar form. That's the dangerous form, swallowing, speaking, and breathing. And so it, it remains a clinical diagnosis. And so sometimes you do the first line serum testing, which is the anti-acetylcholine receptor antibodies. And that's binding, blocking, and modulating. And if those are negative, we call that sing zero negative zero negative because the first line testing was negative however we have second line testing especially in the bulbar form with or without ocunomyosinia gravis and that is muscle specific kinase so musk is the second line testing and so you can be double zero negative they're both zero negative but one's a single zero negative and then a double zero negative and then there's the third line tests which are controversial because their, their specificity and sensitivity isn't that great. So that's why we go in order. We don't order all the tests all at once. We go in order, first line, second line, third line testing. And that third line testing is LRP4 and strided muscle antibody and titin. And these have variable levels of specificity. And so single ser seronegative, double seronegative, triple seronegative. And by the time you're starting to get down to triple seronegative, you probably either should just be calling it clinical myasthenia gravis or doing electrophysiologic testing. And the gold standard, of course, is single fiber EMG. But repetitive nerve stimulation also shows the decremental response, which represents the electrophysiologic correlate to variable and fatigable. And we still have to do a CT of the chest to look for thymoma. So seronegative myasthenia simply means your blood test is negative. It can be single seronegative for the typical ones, anti-acetylcholine receptor, binding, blocking, modulating, double seronegative for musk, and triple seronegative if you include those strided muscle antibodies, LRP4 and titin. You're going to switch to electrophysiology before you go to triple seronegative, and everybody gets a CT of the chest. It only matters because even though you're going to treat myasthenia the same no matter what, seropositivity is sometimes necessary for the FDA-approved drugs that are more expensive, the biologics. They often require seropositive, and most of the studies that have been done on patients both for thymectomy and also for antibody testing with, uh, is required for the biologics. And so it is important to go ahead and establish seropositivity. And if you're seropositive on musk, then you're probably not going to have a thymectomy. So you need to know about seronegative myasthenia gravis.